All right, some of the most common mistakes made in pottery, and I will show you how to fix those. Most common mistake number one, not centering the clay before you throw or before you start to make your piece. So I'm not gonna center it. It's just one lump. And I'm gonna try to throw this. Well, you see, my center came out fine, kind of, if you ignore everything else. Ignore everything else. The center came out fine, but what happens after this, when I start to pull walls? You see how it's, like, totally messing up my hands now? And how awful it looks. See how thin it is on this side? And how thick it is on this side. So with a piece like this, I hate to say it, if it is not centered, it is really hard to correct the mistakes beyond this point. I have had uh, little kids in my studio who love to see this and keep it the way that it is. Um, that's a little kid. You know, if it was one of my high school students, I would have them start over. So... We are going to munch this down, knead it. And I'm going to munch this down. I'm going to, I'm just, I'm pressing on the walls with the palm of my hands. And I'm just pressing those down. And at the same time, I'm going to press forward on the clay. And then I'm going to press down again. Kind of like making a plate, right? Because I want to even the clay out. And what I don't really want is this huge hole in the center. But I'm going to keep pressing down. Do you see how my hole's kind of getting worked out just a little bit? And I'm going to press up again. Press down again. And I'm going to press forward again. And then my hole's really tiny now. The other thing you can do instead of fighting it and kneading it on the wheel is cut the clay off, knead it on a canvas table or on a table, back into a ball, throw it back on the wheel, and start over again. You don't have to knead it on the wheel. If you are bound and determined to learn how to knead on the wheel, well, this is a perfect opportunity to try it. I don't care, I'm gonna just close in the bubble, close in the hole, and I'm gonna start kneading on the wheel. So this is a much harder clay. So the good thing is I started with a harder clay. It's cold, so it's fighting me, so kneading it actually will be a benefit. Okay. When I need, and the other thing is too, if you get a bunch of clay here on the side, scrape it off with the wheel. I don't want your hand doing this while you're throwing. When I need, I squeeze the clay up. And there's two different ways to squeeze the clay down. I could put one hand up here, keep one hand on the side. I've never found that helpful. Oh my God. Anyway, okay, ignore its shape what it looks like. I always put the clay, I use the inside palm of my hands right here and here, and I press it back down while at the same time, yeah, and that looks even better, right? So seriously, I teach high school. Um, I've taught high school ceramics before. I've had everything commented in regards to what things look like on a wheel. So I'm pretty used to it. I get a kick out of it myself. Especially when it's a creative student. Every time I pull the clay down, I always start at about this point, I start releasing my hands and opening them. That forces the next layer of clay to go up. If you remember when you were in school, you were learning how to knead clay. 
the teacher always said to make it look like ram horns. This is kind of very similar, except you've got one horn. And do you see, wait, wait, wait for it. Oh, go around, go around. There's an air bubble right there. So I'm getting, I'm working out the air bubbles. So I'm pressing down, as I press down, I pull out. Do you see there? That's an air bubble. So as I press down, and that whole piece just tore out. And that is the piece that actually was getting kneaded into the hole that I made. So we're going to see if I can't use that center as my new hole. So I'm going to center again. Okay. So I will start with a bowl. Let's see what we can do to a bowl that's wrong that we can then fix. So I'm going to make the hole with my thumbs. Looks much better. It's it's slightly off. I'm still fighting the clay. It's still a little tough because it's so cold, but I think this is good enough for me to do a quick video on how to fix things. So I'm going to throw the walls and I'm going to start opening up my bowl. So I'm opening, oh yeah, you guys can't see. Um, here, okay. I'll open up the bowl. My hands are going dry, so when your hands go dry, your hands will get really tacky on the clay, and bloop, you'll pull out a chunk of clay. I'm gonna throw the bowl. And let's, let's just say this, so you might actually lose visual uh, view, because I'm gonna go super fast. So this is what you don't want to see when you're throwing a bowl. This is what happens. See how it's getting out around right away? Wait for it. Here we go. See how it's starting to wobble? That's why I'm going at the speed that I'm going. So yeah, actually, let's just do that. So you go really fast and you just want your bowl to be perfect, but it ends up being like that. All right, you went a little too fast and see how flat that is. Let's shrink down, see how flat that is. So you don't want something that flat. So you wanna slow the wheel down. This is what happens when the wheel's spinning too fast. Flattens your bowl out. In order to correct this, to put it back in a bowl form, I'm gonna slowly lift my hands. Do you see how slow this is though? This is really slow. This is like turtle slow. But I'm slowly, and I've got enough thickness in this wall. So if you've got a super thin wall and you try this and it's just like wobbling all over the place and not, not pulling up for you, it's probably because the wall's too thin to do this. But my walls are thick enough still that I can correct this shape of this bowl. Voila! Beautiful! Beautiful! Alright, now I can continue with throwing my bowl. Let's say you didn't want to make a bowl at all, but you wanted to make a cylinder. So let's put it back into a cylinder shape. Or try to. I'm still going pretty slow. It's a little bit better. I wouldn't say I've totally brought it in. Sometimes when you bring the clay out just enough, once you force it into shape just a little too much, you start getting these 
ridge bumps and the top I'm not worried about the top at all so I don't really care I'll show you how to fix that later sometimes though when you do start out with a bowl and all of a sudden you want to go to a cylinder it doesn't work out too great so I'm gonna try I'm gonna try to get it back into a cylinder, but sometimes you will end up with these, I like to call them curls in the clay. You can kind of see where my fingers are. It'll actually start curling because it's no longer working into itself because it's been stretched a little too far. And you can see it. Do you see the ripples in my hands as it goes around? because it's been worked out a little too far. So this is another perfect time to say, oh, I've made this mistake. Actually, I think this kind of looks cool. Um, and one way to accentuate this is just to make more of these ripples. But if you really want to get rid of these, at this point, you have to decide, am I making a bowl? Am I making a cylinder or a mug? At this point, because now you've already got ripples going on here and the clay's not working itself back into itself, I would choose a bowl. So I'm going to choose a bowl. I'm going to start from the bottom. I still have quite a bit of clay sitting in the base. So I'm going to start from the bottom. I'm going to take out some of the clay in the base. At the same time though, I'm not going to make my walls much thinner than what they are because I don't want to make them too thin. So I want to be very careful when I start pulling it back out to make it a bowl because remember, I've decided to go back to a bowl. I don't want to make the walls too thin. Now, from this point down, the piece seems to be okay. From this point up, I have these ripples. These fingers I'm gonna use as pinchers and I'm gonna make sure this is wet because what I don't want is for it to dry out because dryness is your enemy and I'm slowly at the same time I'm pulling out just ever so slowly so I'm slightly at an angle pulling towards me but at the same time I'm pulling up so I'm pulling it up and outwards towards me and I'm not pinching all that hard on the clay because I don't want, again, I don't want the walls to get too thin, especially up here near the top. Because remember, we're going to fix that top. Okay. I like that shape. I think I got rid of most of the bubbles or the ripples. I'm going to take a pin tool. This is not a pin tool. For those of you that are new to pottery, a pin tool is a tool that looks like this. It's wood. And then it has, or it's metal. And it has a pin. It looks almost like a, like a pin, like a sewing needle stuck on the end. You want to take that pin tool. And since the wheel is turning that way around and out like that, I am dragging this tool against the clay and I am starting zoom in. If you need to see this better, I've got my pinky on the bat so that my hand is perfectly still. You can anchor yourself on anything, anchor your wrist on something, but I am anchoring myself on the bat. I'm taking the pin tool and I am slowly guiding it into the clay at an angle. Whew. That was a little too much because mine's... So if that happens, if you get a ripple, and even if you have a line in it, straighten your walls back out. Remember, slowly is the key. Okay, and I'm gonna go back and try this one more time. I'm gonna take my pin tool. And, yup, there we go. I cut that much clay off. I, I could have cut less than that. But, at the same time, my clay landed on my walls, which are now getting a little thin, but I'm just gonna guide them back into place, into shape. I can still feel, feel 
the ripple in the clay, but it's not that bad. So here, I'm going to clean this up so you can see how not bad this turned out. I know, right? Here, I'm the one teaching the clay, and I'm like, hey, it's not that bad. Sometimes, though, when you're throwing pottery, you wind up with imperfections in your piece, and that's okay. Honestly, like, someone's not going to put it on a wheel and spin it, right? And then judge you and say, oh, you did this wrong. No, this is not going to happen. I'm going back at the bottom. I'm going to make the shape a little bit different. Bring out a little bit more clay on the bottom. I kind of like the shape. But I see some unevenness here for me that's bugging me. And I, I let it get dry because I took the sponge and dried things out. And I'm trying to throw in a way that my hands are not in the way of the screen, guys. Sorry. Ah. But you can see right there where it's starting to get uneven. I'm going to slowly pull up and out at the same time. And I can still feel that there's like kind of a ripple in the wall somewhere. I think you can see it. Can you see it? I can feel it. That's okay though. Again, someone is not going to put this on a potter's wheel and spin it and figure out what you did wrong. Okay, so for right now, I'm happy with the whip. I fixed the bowl. I turned it into something, at least. I'm going to clean it out, and I want to use this tool here. A lot of people don't use this tool, but this tool is awesome. This tool, I am going to use the pointy, pointy end, and I'm going to stab into the clay here at the bottom, and then lock out what I don't want. So this tool is awesome. It does help you get rid of junk at the bottom of the piece that you don't want. I don't suggest dragging it this way against the clay because sometimes it'll cause problems. But the only reason why I did was I had gotten it away from the clay enough on this side that I could drag it and pull it away. I'm going to do this again and get rid of a little bit more. And when I'm using this tool, I can run the wheel just a little bit quicker. I don't want to go too fast. Remember, it's a bowl. And you remember how I went super fast and it started to lay out. So I don't want that happening again. And do you see if I put my nose down, the pointy end down, and then turn this into the piece and use this as a cutter, it will actually shave bits of the clay off. So that I can have kind of a cool looking bowl. So that it has this nice like V-shaped shape to it. Okay. I hope that helps um, in regards to fixing some mistakes. Um, I will fix some more mistakes later, but for now, mistakes on a bowl. And not centering. Have fun.